Randy, I know you're an optimistic guy. I'm just wondering uh, you, your reaction to Paris Ford leaving, and did you see it coming at all? You know, I'm I'm excited to see Brandon Hill play. Uh, you know, I'm 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 here to talk about the guys on the team, not the guys off the team. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, exciting time for Brandon Hill to step up and and be the player he is. Uh, you know, Judson will be his backup, and uh, but you know, Brandon had a great practice the last couple of days, and so excited to see where he's going to go. So turning the page Brandon. is very important, and isn't it, Randy? I'm sorry. Turning the page is very important at, at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. Randy, what have you liked about Brandon's game in practice and the times you've seen him on the field? Brandon is an extremely physical player and plays within our defense really well. So uh, excited to see, you know, he, he knows the calls, he knows where to be. And, you know, now is his opportunity when he, when he's there to make those plays. Randy, what I, you know, I know you, you mentioned wanted to focus on the guys that are here, but so the, 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 the veterans that are here, you know, Damar and Patrick and, the, and Rashad and those guys on this defense, how, how much more of a role now do they take without Paris, you know, um, in terms of a leadership perspective and, you know, really just keeping this defense uh, really together? Well, it's kind of like I said, the last time I spoke with you guys, um, Damar and Patrick are the two captains and have done a tremendous job in my opinion. So, you know, I don't, I don't think we'll lose a beat. Florida State's played four different quarterbacks this year, but uh, Jordan Travis has kind of been the guy of late. Uh, you know, what kind of stands out about him and how do you uh, kind of attack his mobility? Jordan is, is uh, you know, I think he's the starter uh, for sure. I would be shocked if, if we saw anybody else unless he went down. Uh, tremendous athlete. Uh, you know, he throws a good ball, but he also has got tremendous escapability. And I think that's really where he stands out. He can he not get tackled in the pocket, scramble out, and then make a sharp throw, you know, right on the money. And that's where I would say he's, he's most impressive. Uh, Randy, going back to um, you know your guys' most recent game, obviously you know, the Notre Dame game, you guys had an had an off week to to look at that film, um, or at least that you know the couple of days after. Sure. What did you kind of see on the on the bigger plays that that were led up, and just the, the the defensive performance as a whole? Anything you can take positive or negative from from that game? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I think number one, uh, Book escaped us several times, and we have to do a better job of corralling. Uh, the quarterback up because, you know, when a guy like that a guy like Travis, when, when those guys are able to escape, uh, if they're the quarterbacks that we have played, you know, they, they find a way to, uh, you know, make a big play and find somebody open. And it's, it's very difficult to stay with a guy for a long, long period of time when you're playing uh, division one wide receivers and running backs. And uh, sooner or later, those guys will shake you if you, if you, uh, can't get pressure on them. Randy, following up on that, how have you felt about the, you know, the continued play of your younger interior defensive linemen? You know, you've had to throw in a lot of different guys there and you've explored your depth. Um, and now, you know, we saw initial bursts from players like Kalijah and Devin. Uh, how have you seen their progress and maybe how they've responded to some challenges where things didn't go as well as they did originally? Sure. Well, I would say that, that we were down at, at a point to the seventh D lineman. Um, and those kids, you know, went in there and played pretty well. Arguably one of the best offensive lines in the country uh, in Notre Dame. And would they have uh, 75 yards or less rushing? Uh, they were averaging almost 300. So, uh, you know, I, I thought they did well. You know, it just, it's a learning experience when you get down that far. And, uh, you know, the kids will make two or three great plays and then it's an oh crap type thing. And then that happens with experience. And, you know, as you know, you know the, the older we get, the, the better that we make choice wise. And sometimes young guys make a bad choice. And, and you, when you're playing one of the top teams in the country, you know, they, they pay you pay for it when that happens. Randy, what does a bye week allow you guys to do? Well, after seven weeks of football and what, seven or eight weeks before that, it gives you a chance to recover. Um, we're, we're, 
we were about to the point where we were practicing the whole team in yellow uh, because, you, you know, guys were banged up and it, it gives them a chance to heal up, which is, you know, really critical and, and gives us a chance to play fast again. You, you talked about Brandon Hill and Judson, but uh, Pat mentioned the other day about Buddy Mack and how he's uh -huh. been practicing pretty well. I mean, what have you seen from him? Buddy, Buddy, another young guy with with limited experience, but plays fast, is really smart, can play several positions back there. And, uh, you know, he's he's more or less been back on the scout team until a couple of weeks, you know, really this week. And uh, so um, yeah, there's a good likelihood he'll play. We'll see how much and how well he does. But uh, based on what he's done at practice, I feel very comfortable about him being out there. He's a fast physical player, I guess, is the answer. Randy, losing uh, Damari Mathis is a big blow to your defense. How have your uh, Woods and, uh, and uh, Marquise Williams done uh, as a sophomore young quarter, cornerbacks in, in his place? Well, uh, you know, again, we're talking about two guys with limited experience. And so uh, they're getting the experience on the job. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're, they're handling it well. They've had a couple of plays where they, you know, just couldn't make it or didn't make the play. But, you know, when you look at their, their uh, play as a whole, I feel like they're, they're continuing to improve and, and learn on the run and, and playing some tremendous wide receivers. But, uh, you know, ultimately that's a position that when you don't make a play there, you really stand out. Whereas when you're a defensive tackle or a Mike linebacker, you, you make the same error and nobody even knows it happens sometimes. And so, you know, it's a, it's a tough position and you got to be able to shake it off and, and play the next play. And I think they've done a remarkable job of that. Is it, is it the toughest position to learn on the job? Uh, I don't know if it's the toughest position to learn. Uh, I would say it's more the toughest position to learn technique uh, during games, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, you, you, you practice uh, as much as you can with scout team and with our offense, but, you know, ultimately it comes down to experiencing games and that's where, uh, you know, you learn the most and, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And, and unfortunately it's stuff that you see, like I said, on, on uh, TV or on tape, whereas you don't necessarily see that sometimes in the box. Randy, I know you guys are focused game to game, but you know you guys have four game, you have four regular season games left here. What are you hoping to see from your group uh, over this closing stretch here? Well, I, I hope to see after a week off that that we're going to play as fast as we as we have, uh, you know, maybe faster. You know, it seemed like you know as we as we got through the grind, we we started to slow a little bit, and maybe uh, you know maybe that hurt us a little bit in chasing down. Uh, you know, uh, quarterbacks at times, but uh, I see us out there today playing a lot faster. And so I guess that would probably be my number one excitement is the guys are back fresh again. And, and I would expect us to play with that level of speed. Randy, I think one of the things that's led to some external, I don't know, frustration, angst, whatever you want to call it, is this feeling that uh, this team has not played quite as good as it is possible of playing but from the inside does that does that feeling kind of flip on itself that there's it's not like you guys aren't capable of playing better you just have to play better does that lead to optimism internally where it may lead to some angst externally oh absolutely i'm sorry for those who have angst i we all want to be seven and oh including myself just in case anybody needs to know that but uh you know uh, at times uh, I look at our young guys and they're playing, uh, you know, they just wipe it off and go to the next play and they keep learning. And, you know, our, our older guys, you know, you talked about Pat and, and Damar and those guys are continuing, to, you your and your are continuing to be positive. And I think that's, you know, uh, it's a, it's a great thing to see, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's a learning experience for everybody. And I think kids are handling it really well.